Mercury. It can be assumed with a fair amount of probability that the planet that caused the disturbances described above, the Greek Hermes, the Babylonian Nebo, to each of the planets is ascribed a world age, and the ages of the other planets Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, and Mars are well discernible. The dominion of Mercury must be looked for in one of the world ages and one of the world cataclysms. It was apparently ascribed to this lesser planet. Mercury was a feared god long before Mars, Nergal, became one. And one of the world cataclysms apparently ascribed to this lesser planet, Mercury, was a feared god long before Mars, Nurgle, became one. As the name of Mount Sinai refers to Sin, the moon, so the name of Mount Nebo in Moab, where Moses died, was called already in that early time by the name of the planet Mercury. Later in the 7th and 6th centuries, before the present era, this god was much venerated, especially by the Chaldeans and other peoples of Mesopotamia. As the names of Nebopolazar and his son Nebuchadnezzar prove, in earlier times Mercury was known to the Sumerians as Inki. Equally pronounced was the position of Thoth, the planet Mercury of the Egyptian pantheon. The Theophore part of the name Tutmos for the northern peoples, Mercury, was Odin. It is characteristic that in many astronomical texts, Mercury, the Greek Hermes, the Babylonian Nemo, the Egyptian Thoth, is portrayed as the planet god which had in his dominion the physiological capacity of memory in man, as well as that of speech, according to Augustine. Speech is Mercury. Direct information that confirms our assumption is provided by Hyginus. Hyginus wrote that for many centuries men lived without town or laws, speaking one tongue under the rule of Jove. But after Mercury explained the languages of men, whence he is called Hermeneutes, interpreter for Mercury, in Greek, is called Hermes. He too divided the nation. Then discord arose among mortals. The Romans, as well as the Greeks, pictured Mercury with wings, either on his headgear or at his ankle, and with an emblem, the caduceus, a staff with two snakes winding, the double serpent, caduceus, the emblem of Mercury, is found in ornaments of all peoples of antiquity. A special treatise could be written about this subject. I found the caduceus all around the world. Mercury, or Greeks, was a messenger of the gods that speeded on his errand sent by Jupiter. Among the satellites that presently orbit each of the giant planets are bodies comparable in size to Mercury or even larger. Abraham Rockenbach, whose Decomatus Tractus Novus Methodicus, he had an occasion to quote when investigating the causes of the deluge, included in his treatise also the following entry. In the year of the world 1944, 288 years after the deluge, a comet was seen in Egypt of the nature of Saturn, in the vicinity of Cairo, in the constellation of Capricorn, and within the space of 65 days it traversed three signs in the sky. Confusions of languages and dispersals of peoples followed. On this the text of the 11th chapter of Genesis speaks in more detail. From the annals of modern astronomy, we know of cases when a comet traveling on an elongated orbit was caught by the planet Jupiter, by which is meant the change of the cometary orbit to one of a short period, with the Sun in the focus of its orbit. It is possible to reconstruct planetary disturbances of that age with some approximation. In my understanding, Mercury was once a satellite of Jupiter, or possibly Saturn. In the course of the events which followed Saturn's interaction with Jupiter and its subsequent disruption, Mercury was pushed from its orbit and was directed to the Sun by Jupiter. It could, however, have been a comet, and the entwined snakes of the Caduceus may memorialize the appearance it had when seen by the inhabitants of the Earth. At some point a contact occurred between magnetospheres of Mercury and the Earth, described in the traditions of various nations, that the Earth was once a satellite of a giant planet 
is nothing more than a surmise, but we dealt with it only as with a hypothetical construction, requiring further elucidation, but with a greater show of support derived from the, mytho the mythological folkloristic sources. And we have tried to demonstrate on the case of Mercury that once it had been a satellite of one of the giant planets and was directed by Jupiter closer to the Sun. The claim, therefore, is that Mercury has traveled on its present orbit for only some five or six thousand years. This view conflicts with both the nebular and the tidal theories of the origin of the planetary family and with the assumption that the planets have occupied the same orbits for billions millions of years. Among the reasons which suggest that Mercury was the planet which caused the catastrophe of the confusion of languages is the fact that the age of Mercury follows that of Saturn. In the Hindu conception of the world ages, the Sata Yuga, the Sumerian age, was brought to a close by a general flood. Sir William Jones on the Gods of Greece, Italy, and India, 1799. The Saturnian Age was, in truth, the age of the general flood. Mercury appeared soon after the beginning of the next age. The Treta Yuga, and for at least a part of this age, men lived under the ages of Mercury. In Hindu astronomy, the usual name for the planet Mercury was Buddha. In the Bhagavata Marita, it is said that Buddha Mercury became visible in the 1002nd year of the Kali Yuga. According to John Bentley, the 1002nd year of the Kali Yuga astronomical era corresponds with the 179th year of the Treta Yuga of the poets. Remarks on on the principal areas and dates of the ancient Hindus. The Bhagavata Murta describes in mythical language the first appearance of Mercury on the chronology of the Hindus. Jones also placed the ancient Buddha or Mercury about the beginning of the Treta Yuga. In Hindu, Lord Buddha, or Mercury, is said to have married Ila of Satyavrata, Satyavrata the Manu of the Satra Yuga, in whose days the deluge occurred. This is the best way of saying that the time of Mercury's prominence was shortly after the deluge, the age of Saturn, the Sata Yuga, the Masa Yuga. Among the descriptive epithets applied to Mercury in India were Buddha, Mind, spirit, intelligence, sarvagana, all-knowing, sharapinya, possessor of the six sciences, avyavadi, eloquent, unequaled in speech. The presence of the god could induce forgetfulness. Nebo is regarded as the son of Marduk or Jupiter. His chief cult center in Babylonia was Borisipa. Borisipa. Borisipa whose ziggurat, or stepped pyramid, was consecrated to Nebo. In the Talmud, the ruins of this structure were considered to be the remains of the Tower of Babel. It was of these ruins that our Canon is reported to have said a third of the tower was burnt, a third sunk into the earth, and a third is still standing. Talmud next quotes Rab as having said, the atmosphere of the tower causes forgetfulness. Nebo was also thought of as a herald of the gods and as presiding over all matters pertaining to the intellect. The prayer of Ashura Benipal for Nebo, the perfect sun, regulator of all things in heaven and earth, him that holds the tablet of wisdom, carrier of the stylus of fate, as lined in Sumerian and Babylonian Psalms. 1909. The Sumerians believe that there was a time when all mankind spoke the same language, and that it was Inki, the Sumerian god of wisdom, who confounded their speech. So concluded S. N. Kramer, after publishing his translation of a Sumerian epic fragment, The Babel of Tongues, a Sumerian version of the Journal of the American Oriental Society. The text of the tablet is translated by Kramer as follows. The whole universe, the people, in unison, to Enlil, in one tongue, Enki, the leader of the gods, endowed with wisdom, changed the speech in their mouths, brought contention into the speech of man that, until then, had been one.
the Sumerian Inki was the same as the Babylonian Ea. The name Ea was written with the ideogram Inki, E-N-K-I. Students of Babylonian astronomy were well aware that by star of the god Ea, Mercury is meant. Thoth and Hermes of Egypt, Oxford 1922, Diodorus wrote that when Isis took over the kingdom from Osiris, Hermes, i.e. Thoth, became her chief counselor. This means that the planet Mercury was prominent in the period after Jupiter replaced Saturn as the dominant planet. Diodorus also wrote that it was by the Egyptian Hermes that the common language of mankind was first further articulated. An Egyptian hymn calls Thoth the deity that made different the tongue of one country from another. Thoth is creator of languages. So that's why I always thought it was pronounced Thoth, like thought, because that's where the word thought came from. I know a lot of people call it Thoth. I still think it's Thoth. Another text tells that this god distinguished or separated the tongue of country from country. Another reaccounts that he distinguished the tongue of every foreign land. Kearney comments that the words made different or distinguished or separated are past participles, alluding probably to some lost myth or legend according to which Thoth differentiated the languages of the various countries. These epithets might even be cited as evidence of an Egyptian parallel to the Hebrew fable of Yahweh in the Tower of Babel. In Egyptian text, Thoth is called Lord of Divine Words and Mighty in Speech. From one aspect, he is speech itself. Thoth could teach a man not only words of power, but also the manner in which to utter them. The words, however, must be learned from Thoth. Thoth was also known as scribe of the gods, of the gods, and lord of books, the gods of the Egyptians, London, 1904. Thoth, the Hermes of Egypt, Oxford, 1922. In the dialogue, Phaedrus, Plato presents a story about the invention of letters by Thoth and explores some of the implications of this new skill. It will create forgetfulness in the learner's souls because they will not use their memories. They will trust to the external written characters and not remember of themselves. Um, see Tatius Germania Yet above all, they worship Mercury and count it no sin to win his favor on certain days by human sacrifices. Oh boy. Odin was the head of the Nordic pantheon. A speech by Saxon envoys to Britain. We worship the gods of our fathers. That is, Jupiter, Saturn, and the rest of those that rule the world. But most of all, we worship Mercury, whom in our language we call Vodin. Of Odin, it is said he spoke so well and so smoothly that all who heard him believed all he said was true. <laughs> he was associated with Hugin, Hugin or Thought, and Munin, or Memory. One of the myths about Odin connects him with the multiplicity of languages. The Gal Faginning. It is said that the reason why Odin is known by many different names is the fact that there are in the world so many different languages. Hermes, the planet Mercury, is the deity which presides over the rational energy, wrote the Neoplatonist philosopher Propifer, the wanderings of Ulysses, and Proculus, the last great representative of that school, elaborated in his description of Mercury powers. Mercury unfolds into the light intellectual gifts, fills all things with divine reasons, elevates souls to intellect, wakens them as from a profound sleep. Proculus also described Hermes as responsible for distinguishing and interpreting things, recalling to memory the sources of the intellect. Thoth, an Egyptian hymn, assigns to Thoth control over man's mnemonic powers, invoking him as the deity that recalls all what had been forgotten. The City of God Seven. Arnobius, Arnobius. Arnobius argued that Mercury is simply speech and words exchange in a conversation. Polyanus Rhodes and Argonautica provide further details about Mercury's association 
with language. Here, Mercury is made responsible for the confusion of languages. The meaning is clearly that Hermes invented one language for one people, another for another. The whole account reminds one of the biblical Tower of Babel, which we'll be doing next. The Caduceus was an emblem of the Babylonian deity Ningishsida. Ningishsida. An astronomical tablet from Boghaskoi identifies Ningishida with, with Nebo Mercury. Ancient Mexican codices portray the worship of entwined snakes. Latin American mythology. Jupiter's satellite Ganymede is larger than Mercury and Saturn's biggest moon Titan is almost as large. Homer, the Odyssey. Um, this was a long one. In Babylonian sources, the destructive acts of Nebo are recorded. The lofty one, furious, the word of him, causes the earth beneath to shudder. The word which in his glory he spoke, waters have flooded the wide land. Babylonian liturgies, Paris 1913. R.S. Harrington and T.C. Van Flandern. My buddy Tom Van Flandern. A dynamical investigation of the conjecture that Mercury is an escaped satellite of Venus, Icarus 28, 1976.